Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about how to use Insert Database in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. So in a past lesson, I taught you how to insert data into D365. And in another lesson, I also taught you how to use the insert record set keyword to insert larger groups of data into the system. There's one more approach that's important that I wanna teach you about, and that is using insert database and record insert list object to insert many records into the database a little faster. So let's recap a little bit. If you're new to learning how to insert data into the database, I recommend you check out um, this blog article on insert data in D365. It will show you um, how to instantiate a table buffer variable, how to populate it. It'll teach you about indexes. And then finally, you can call this insert method on any table buffer to insert that data into the database. The system is really cool. In X++, it will um, convert all the data in this record into a SQL database and that SQL database will get run against the SQL server and you will insert the data into the database. This type of code with an insert method um, is definitely the default. You'll see that all over the place within the system. You'll also see scenarios where you have a while select loop looping through other records populating a new record and calling insert on that record to bring in that data. That's very common. Um, that said, there are some scenarios where calling insert many, many times, so we're talking maybe thousands of times, tens of thousands of times, um, could be really slow. Um, that's because code inside this insert method um, will get called. Um, and so uh, there's just a few better, faster ways um, that you can run this. And so let's talk about that um, right now. So if I move over actually to Microsoft's documentation on record insert list class, they actually have a good example of using this insert database technique. So I'll scroll down to the bottom for now and let's walk through it. So basically, the first thing we need to actually do before we can call insert database is instantiate a variable of type record insert list. In this case, the variable is named bomb list. Now, after we've declared that variable, we have to instantiate it. So bomb list equals new record insert list because record insert list is really just a class and that class takes one parameter. We need to tell it what type of records this list object is going to contain. So we use this function table num and then we give it the name of the table we want to give it data for. So in this case um, there's a table named bomb and we are going to um, store a list of bomb records into this bomb list records insert list um, object. Next, we can have a while select loop or a query run or a few different options, but essentially, you know, we need some way of inserting a bunch of data. And so here we've got a while select loop. It's looping through all bomb records um, that match a particular bomb ID. Then we've got a new table buffer, one called new bomb, and we're actually copying data from this record we're selecting into this new table buffer. We're changing the bomb ID to be a new bomb ID. And then now this is where you would typically see a call to the insert method. You would see new bomb dot insert. And that works very well. You'll see that all over the place. Um, but in this case, using a record insert list um, can speed up this process. So instead of calling insert on our table buffer, we actually take our table buffer and we add it to our record insert list variable. So we've got bomb list dot add is the name of the method. We pass it the table buffer we wish to add. So essentially what we're doing is we're storing in memory a list 
of this data that we would like to insert. And then once we're done filling up this list, we call database. And by calling insert database, the system's gonna send all this data to the SQL Server um, and insert that data. And so the way I usually like to think about it is that this line is um, sending all the data and basically all the data will get inserted um, by the end of this line and then I can write some more code after that. Technically that's not the case as we're adding records and calling add to this list the system can um, as it feels it has resources it can actually start inserting these records into the database but the point here is instead of adding records one by one which is what the call to insert would do we can actually uh, insert multiple records into the database at the same time with only you know a single trip to the database and that allows this data to get inserted a whole lot faster um, and you can see that here um, up in this description uh, this class lets you insert more than one record into the database at the time which reduces communication between the application and the database. Records are inserted only when the kernel finds the time appropriate, but they are inserted no later than the call to insert database. So this line here, that means you can run code afterwards that would query um, this table and you would be able to find all that data. So in the end, it really is pretty simple. We declare a record insert list, we instantiate it, and we call add. Um, on our list and then finally we call insert database and so you might ask okay when should I be call using this approach versus when I sh should just call insert and I think that's a little tricky to answer but in general if you're only inserting a few records and you know programmatically that it's only ever going to be a few records calling insert is perfectly fine if, however, you know you're going to be looping through many, many records um, and you aren't able to use the insert uh, record set uh, functionality, then using a this record insert list and insert database is definitely going to improve um, the time it takes to insert this record or, or these records uh, quite a bit. So um, let's look at that a little bit more. If I actually switch to um, a few examples, I can look at the sales table and on the sales table table in the create retail sales affiliation method, I can actually see an example of this being used. And you can find this through lots and lots of these different classes and tables. But here it's instantiating a uh, record insert list. They call it retail sales affiliation list. We've got a while select statement that's looping through records. And then we're adding a record to a list and then calling insert database. In this case, it's pretty straightforward, um, but there is a cup. There's one reason in this case why why you couldn't use um, just a insert record set um, like you could uh, in, in other approaches, and that's because we're calling this init value method. And this is great. It's object oriented. Init value will default you know one or many values on this table buffer um, and so we wouldn't be able to use a insert record set like we could in some other cases and so when I'm talking about insert record set I really am just talking about um, this case here you can check out my other article on how to in how to use insert record set um, and that's done where you basically convert a while select statement like that into something that's much more efficient with a select statement but insert record sets are really only used when you can select data from another table or tables and you're copying it into a destination table but in cases like this one where you need to write code to populate that table, that insert record set's not gonna work. Other cases where you might need to um, use the insert database over an insert record set is if there's a bunch of if statements 
in your code. Um, maybe inside of this while select statement, you've got an if statement that determines how you might populate this record. That's not so easy to do writing a select statement and using insert record set. So instead, you'd have to either use um, a call to insert or you can speed that up by calling an insert database after you've added those records. Other scenarios that you might consider is um, you're not always using a while select statement. You might be reading from a file or you might be reading from the user interface. And so if you're not reading from a table, you won't be able to use an insert record set. You'll have to use some kind of loop um, and in those cases, again, you can always call the insert method directly. Um, I usually write my code that way where I call insert, but then once I've done that and I realize this loop might be calling a bunch of different other code, or, or it might be calling a bunch of records, and it might have some if statements or it might call some other methods, um, I want to switch this to be an insert uh, database in many cases. So let's look at a few other examples just for fun. I can see here um, we're calling insert database or the base Microsoft's code is calling it and they're using a query run object to loop through this record, add it to a list and call insert database. And there's many, many other examples here. We're looping through an enumerator and populating a record, finally adding it to this list and calling insert database. Um, so that's mostly it is you definitely can use insert database to increase the speed of um, inserting data, especially when you've got a large number of records. Um, you can't have this fill in too many records. If we're talking millions of records, you're going to run out of memory usually in this record set, um, but definitely something to play around with and figure out what's best for, um, for you. Sometimes you can write an if statement and call insert database after maybe you've populated a, a thousand records or something to really force the system to wait and push that to the database. One other thing that I wanted to um, call out real quick is there is a record sorted list um, object. This record sorted list is very similar to the record insert list. It's basically used in kind of the same way. Um, the difference here is that um, as you add records to this record sorted list, it will automatically sort the records that you're putting into this list so that when you insert them into a, a table, they are in a particular order. I would say most of the time, um, the scenarios that I've come uh, um, under don't really require you to insert records in a particular order, or if they do, you're already using a while loop that puts them in that order. Um, but this is kind of a cool thing that can do that for you. And so just to look at another example, we can go back to the sales table table. And if I in look for insert database, I believe there's two examples here. And yep, here's the other one. I can see in the copy discount lines um, method, this is actually using a record sorted list. The one difference here, more than just declaring the variable, instantiating it, um, and adding it to a list and calling insert database, is we need to specify the sort order that we want the system to sort any records that we add to it. So in this case, now we can add records uh, or insert records into the sorted list. Um, in whatever order we want, but they'll automatically get ordered before um, they insert into the database. Again, I don't see that as common, but I wanted to explain what that is. So now we've really covered the three different ways you can insert data, most commonly the insert method, the insert record set, which is great at uh, selecting data from a table and putting it into a new table, and then insert database is really great in this while select scenario um, where you've got a lot of records that it's adding to. You can use insert database to kind of speed up that process. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. 
If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.